So BMW have launched the X3 and X4 at kind of the same time. They're, even the press releases are sort of interchangeable as to which one you're looking at. But this is the X3 and it, it's grown. I mean, it's so much bigger than it used to be. I actually mistaked it for an X5 when I was picking it up going, I think it could be the wrong car. So it seems a bit weird that the cars are getting much bigger. But one thing that's not changing, BMW make exceptional EVs. The i4, the iX, yes, they're expensive, but yes, they're very, very good. This, however, is left over for you people who won't want to go EV just yet. This is a twin power turbo diesel under the bonnet of this, a two liter one. Let's have a good look around this car. So one of the changes to the front is uh, this bit down here. And they made the kidney grill as an old fashioned one that's this kind of self healing one was there. And it's not massive. I don't know what that's for in the middle of it, but it's not massive uh, kidney grill. I quite like, this doesn't have active cruise control on it, which I suspect is what would be normally in that middle there. But the lights are a bit narrower, LED stuff around the front. There's one other change around the back as well I want to show you. So around the back of the car, they've changed these kind of tail light finishers. They've also put in uh, new trims on the exhaust pipes, which there is actual exhaust in there as well. And this new sort of finisher on the bottom as well. That's kind of where they're going with it. I'm not sure what they're going to do with it next, but it's, it's a two liter diesel. Now it does have an electric tailgate. It's the X-Drive 2.0. It's quite a big enough boot. It's, um, I think it's up around 500 liters somewhere, 400 and something liter maybe. But it's not the biggest in class, but it certainly is a big enough space for most people. And you've got shopping bag hooks in here as well. So it's kind of catered for all needs, if you know what I mean. Things remain good old BMW style on the inside, but to keep the price down, this is, it starts about 61,000 euros in Ireland, so keeping the price down is pretty vital. There is manual controls and steering wheel on the seat, which I don't know why to put in a ratchet one, so it just falls back. It's so hard to get ratchet ones right. Why don't you put in a little twiddly wheel like you should have, eh? Um, You've got this standard sort of a touch screen thing in the middle. You've got iDrive, which is far too complicated these days, BMW. You've gone back to the complicated end of stuff. So, I mean, God, you can press buttons here all day, in and out of apps. Setting up, setting up everything is just sort of a hassle because you drill down through all the menus as well, which is kind of weird. I mean, stuff that's in the menus for, for like settings on the car, you can have different driver assistance, different driving modes, sport and individual. You can get into all kinds of fiddly stuff. But some of it is just like, why do I need to do that? That's not really interesting to me. <laughs> you know, anyway, uh, not uh, hanging down. There's a USB-C port in here, a USB-A port in there. No wireless charging or anything in it. There's no active cruise control on this. There's no, things are starting to get used to in the old creature comforts department is missing. You're trading a lot for the CO2 emissions and, and two liter diesel engines out there. Just the general price of cars at the moment. Uh, prices of cars are rising all the time. It's a good interior. There's nothing particularly wrong with it. It does feel, because I've driven the i4 and I've driven the iX and you've driven these upmarket cars, this feels a tiny bit old fashioned. Let's see if there's room in the back though. SUVs, very important market. Small SUVs are the big thing. So rear leg and headroom isn't that bad. Now I'm actually moving that seat there. So that seat is kind of set for me, but I'd say I'd be able to ratchet it forward a small little bit just to do that with it because I just messed around a second ago. There is air conditioning controls back here and there is two USB-C ports. So that's all welcome for the back passengers. This is hard plastic as well. Good for parents. You've got a big child seat here and the child can touch your seat. They can't actually push through the seat with their feet. Uh, nice little um, thing in the middle. This isn't open. There it goes. Oh, there's cup holders on it. Yeah, that's good. That's all there too. And the load through is there as well. It's It's... It's a fine back seat, tons of headroom, and nowhere near the top of this. There's a good fist and a half there between me and the roof as well. So it's quite nice. Here yeah, we do. Take it for a spin. See if that engine's any good, huh? Hey, before we go for a spin, I'd love to thank every one of you for subscribing to the channel. I'd love a few more subscribers if you could. So if you could just hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and maybe leave me a comment as well. Let me know what you'd like from these videos. Now, no more interruptions, back to the drive. So you have to wonder kind of, is BMW doing something to 
nearly harm its own sales. I don't mean in a bad way. Loads of people want to keep diesel. Loads of people want to be driving a diesel rather than an electric car or a petrol car because their mileage, it makes more sense. Or they just don't want it. They just don't like the look of electric cars. They don't like driving them because they, they do dynamically drive very different from a internal combustion car. But what would BMW doing X3 and X4 sort of together? It's like, here's two cars. They're essentially the same, one slightly bigger than the other. What's going on? What's, what's the rationale behind that move? That makes me wonder a little bit about the future of what these cars are going to be. Because I think the crossover SUV, and make no mistake, this is an SUV, it's four wheel drive, it can tow. You know, it's a big car as well, easy house, family of five. Uh, but so will X4, so will X5. So will X6 and X7 as well, mind you. You know, what, where does that lineup go? And I understand that you have um, plenty of opportunity here to make more models, but why would you want to make more models? Why, why would you set out to go, I'm going to make an X3, X1, X2, X3, X4, X5, X6, X7? Is there an X8? I can't remember. It's a lot of models, right? But this one is like, I suppose the last of when things were good, with diesel engines because I remember this twin power engine being launched it's just before like COVID lockdown and I thought it was a superb engine it still is like you put your foot down here and it's just the torque comes on the turbo comes on the whole lot just lights up for you very nicely it really does a fabulous job at pulling you around the place and plus when I got in I had a thousand kilometers range on it uh, I drove my friend from the airport to pick up his car and then drove all the way home last night probably 120 kilometers i have 900 kilometers left you know this is the car that when electric cars started and all those little journalists decided that they're going to do but if i can't drive from dublin to cork and back again on the same charge i'm not buying it this is a diesel car it could do that journey probably two or three times <laughs> without filling up and right now uh diesel petrol is quite expensive at the, at the pumps and it's gone down a bit but it's still a little bit too high but electricity is substantially cheaper right now that was up until yesterday a news report came out saying electricity is going to go up between 20 and 30 percent over this year and gas so we're all going to be paying a little bit more maybe it's time we all start really paying attention where our fuels are coming from dynamically driving this car is actually pretty good it handles pretty well the steering is fairly direct suspension is a little bit on the rough side just here and there i can feel the bumps and lumps in the road something has to do with the tire choices on this car as well and the size of the wheels which also plays a huge factor in the car i for one actually do like the bmw x3 i think it's a good and worthy offering from bmw i'd like to see them put more effort into it maybe it's not a bad joke now look it's it's not going to be a sports car but it is if you need to tow stuff you need to do a bit of work around the farm or around the house it's a good and, and useful uh, addition to the fleet of cars you might have plus this one's getting some updates on the interior as well but it does feel a little bit more old-fashioned than some of the bmws i've been driving lately uh, particularly like uh, like the two series active tour that sort of one i did uh, down in marbella which is uh, kind of more towards the cutting edge of what bmw do and then of course ix and things thank you for joining me in this review it's very kind of you to have you here i hope you've hit the subscribe button um, because we need to get as many subscribers as we can like and leave us a comment as well see what you think of the of the video if you think it was good it's good if you don't think it was good then it's bad that's that uh, but i'd love to hear from you either way uh lovely to have you along bobflavin.com if you're looking for any merchandise i'll be updating that shop very soon with some new bits going into it uh which are pretty good we're going to have it on over there this summer and i'd love to have you along if you want to support or buy us a beer or whatever it is you know you want to look after us then uh, hit me up on the Patreon, PayPal, or indeed channel memberships here. Any way you like, it's all okay. You can do Bitcoin if you really want to. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. And until the next time, I'll see you on the far side of this roundabout. We're going around again.